Hello. Hello. Most of you are actually going to be watching this back later, so I'm going to start talking immediately because um, while it's live and people are coming in, hello everybody. Um, I also know that when you watch it back, you're like, okay, let's just get to this. So I will probably jump right in um, pretty quickly as people are coming in. Hello guys. Go ahead and leave a comment with where you are watching from. I always think it's so fun for you guys to see each other. There's lots of waving. Canada, awesome. Okay, good. So wherever you're watching from, go ahead and just leave that comment. Uh, mention where you're watching from so that we can get to know um, where everyone is, and then we'll dive right in. I hope you guys are prepared to um, add to the discussion. This um, feels like a one-way thing because it's me and the phone, but that's the cool thing about technology is that we get to really connect this way, and you guys get to leave your comments. I'm seeing them all. I'm seeing you guys all show up. This is very cool. Awesome, awesome. Vancouver and Germany, Washington State. Good. Okay. So again, knowing that so many people are going to catch this broadcast recorded um, at a later time, I don't want to spend too much time, as my mom would say, dilly-dallying um, at the beginning, at the top of this broadcast. So this is a very informal um, conversation I would love to have about notebooks. Um, it's something that some of you have asked me to explain a little bit more about why I used my notebooks in certain ways. Um, tips and tricks that kind of go along with that. So that is the purpose of me jumping on Instagram Live. Did I say Facebook Live at some point? If I did, I didn't mean to. Um, I have done many Facebook Live broadcasts, but I have neglected Instagram Live. I don't know why, because I do Instagram stories pretty regularly, um, but this is a great format. I think the reason why I haven't done Instagram Live quite as much is because um, Facebook Live saves the broadcast and they just live there on my Facebook page. Whereas with Instagram Live, they disappear after 24 hours. And I think I can save the broadcast and then put it on YouTube, but then that's more steps. And so it's always interesting to me um, why that hasn't been, maybe it has been. Do you guys know, can I save my broadcast on my Instagram like with those saved little stories? If you know, chime in. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we are talking about notebooks, but let me ask you guys a question. I want you to think about something for just a moment um, in your little place of wherever you are. I'm in my little um, corner in my world and you are somewhere and we get to come together because of technology and wherever you are, I want you to think um, about this. Okay, good. I'm just reading your comments. Okay, um, so the question is this. Is there something in your life, anything, like keep your mind wide open. Is there something in your life that when you do that thing, when you participate in that activity or stay consistent with that habit or whatever, that life just seems a little better. What's that thing? And it could be anything. Chime in with your answer. I mean, if you want to. Like, what is the thing that when you're doing it and you're really good about doing it, life just seems a little better? I know you're thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so... For a lot of people, I have a friend who she cannot go through the day without running. Um, that it just it releases the endorphins. She needs the exercise. She feels it. She feels a huge, huge, huge difference if she doesn't have it. Someone said quiet time. Yes, I am the same way. I'm a very split extrovert introvert kind of personality. And if I don't have my alone time each day, and it's not really consistent when that is, but like if I can't just be by myself with no distractions. I, I, it's not the same. So I'm with you. Yep, a lot of people are saying um, Bible study, scripture study, journaling, exercise, walking, listening to a book, crafting, um, going to the gym, weight training, journaling my food, kid-free time. Okay, awesome. You guys can read, read each other's comments. These alone time is everything, says Miss Susie. Yeah, organizing my home, reading. Okay, so great, great, great questions so or answers and that's what I want you to be thinking about and I guess if nothing else you get from this broadcast I hope that you remember to be consistent and do the thing that makes you just feel like you're complete it makes you feel whole it makes you feel happy and what does this have to do with notebooks <laughs> everything because um, I there are certain things in my life that I just I do not feel complete 
without doing them. And sometimes I'm better about certain things and sometimes I'm not. Praying for me is huge. When I'm not very good about praying and I forget or I get lazy or I neglect it or whatever, I don't feel like my day goes quite as well. Um, there are so many things. My list is actually pretty long. I need to do certain things like every day, not in an OCD way, but like, you know, that just complete me. It just makes me feel whole. And lately, I when I say lately, I probably the last two or three years, I have been, I've been really increasing my use of notebooks um, for my own personal use, hence the reason of us launching notebooks, and my life feels better. My life feels more whole, it feels more complete. I feel like I have so much more clarity. Why does that even happen? Can any of us really explain why doing the things that we love to do really make us happier? I don't, you know, some, some may be able to be explained and some maybe not so much. For me, um, keeping notebooks for different purposes, which I'll go ahead and get into, helps me to feel um, more clarity. Like I said, it's probably the best way to put it and I'm so grateful for that because I feel like I'm more of who I am because of documenting. Now this is my life story. If you're not familiar with me, I don't need to give you the full backstory right now in this context, but the 10 second version is that I kind of, I really feel like this was just in my blood from the beginning, this whole recording life, documenting life, telling stories, recording things, taking pictures, matching pictures and stories. This is pretty much my life's work, um, something that I have had a passion for since I was a kid. And so, um, so there's so many things that I've done with that career-wise. I've been in this industry of memory keeping officially since age 19 um, when I fell into the work of doing um, magazine work. So creating Keepsakes Magazine was scrapbooking magazine. And so I was their creative editor for 12 years and then started this company eight years ago. And a lot of you have been around for a long time. So you know that this is not out of nowhere for me. You know that this is my, my love. Um, aside from my family and my faith and the people that I love, I also love my work. I love this work and I love sharing um, what's working for me. And so without further ado, let's just go right into this. That is the premise that I wanna begin with is that this is something that has worked for me and I don't want this to come across like a you should do this and you should do that and I want you to be overwhelmed with all the ideas. No, that's not the point ever, ever with my sharing. Um, I share what I do, I share what other people do. I'm just constantly interested in helping to inspire you and the stuff that you do. And I'm not even looking at your comments because I'm in such a talking role. Oh man. Okay, Rebecca, you're saying that you've adopted that list making with highlighter and Sharpie. Helps with clarity in your day. Yep, I'm gonna definitely talk about that. Um, okay, I won't be able to catch all of your comments, but I promise I'm gonna take a breath between things and so still chime in. Let's try to keep everything as relevant to the topic of recording and journaling and notebooks and stuff as possible. Um, okay, all right, and by the way, um, if you do have any questions about the Project Life app, that's something that we talk about regularly, but it's not today's topic. Um, just a friendly reminder that the best way to get your answers and get your answers personally, directly from Wendy, is to tap on that green question mark on the home screen of the app because when you do that, it generates an email to Wendy that tells her which version of Project Life you're using, which phone you're on, which or which device, and she will be able to get back with you. That is the best way to get your, your questions answered, not necessarily here on Instagram. Okay, all right, here we go, ready? Um, there are several ways that I use notebooks. I have, I have several notebooks going at any given time. I found this box at Target, <laughs> at Target, just like in the last couple months, I feel like, and it's been awesome, because I'm like, oh good, now I have a place that can kind of keep my notebooks out, um, and not just behind like a cupboard up here. By the way, I'm sitting in my home office. There is a risk at doing a broadcast from home because my dogs are here. <laughs> and if someone happens to ring the doorbell, my dogs are going to go ballistic and you're going to hear it. So I apologize in advance if I have a distraction like that. Um, one of the, I would say the, the most um, significant functional way that I use notebooks um, is this one right here currently. Um, this, it says onward and upward, but that's backwards because the camera is flipped. No, I don't do bullet journaling, not for any specific reason. I've heard of it. I know it's a thing, but I already have a system that 
Like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like I have a system that works for me and I love it, but I've heard that a lot of people love bullet journaling. If you don't know what that is, I don't either, but you can Google it and you can find out. Um, okay, so this notebook, I want you to notice something. See how thin that is? That's because I have ripped a lot of pages out. This is going to go bye-bye, recycle, thrown away as soon as I'm done getting through the last of these pages. This is not meant for posterity. It's not meant for keeping. For me, again, everything I'm sharing is for me. I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do, but for me, this is a notebook that I use for functioning every day. And I mean functioning. Like if I didn't have certain things in writing, I would not remember how to prioritize my day. Just like you, I have a lot of balls in the air at any given time. I, I wear many hats and many, I have many roles in my life. Again, everyone can probably relate to this and I love it and I wouldn't have it any other way, but sometimes I cannot go minute by minute and hour to hour without remembering, okay, what's the most important thing I need to be doing right now as far as tasks? Now I'm not talking about life priorities, like yeah, get your life priorities square, but when it comes to like the to-dos, not the how to be's, but how to do things, Am I making any sense? This is what I use. This is where I keep track of my um, tasks. So, um, glancing at your comments once in a while to make sure I don't miss anything. And thanks so much for being here, by the way. I don't know if I actually said that. Thank you for showing up. That's so cool of you. Um, so this one right here is, um, it says cultivate a good life in case you can't read that backwards. This is actually what I call my sample notebook for the purpose of talking to you guys. I always have it around. The reason why is because this is personal to me. There's a lot of stuff in here, not dark secrets, but like, you know, stuff that's not for the public eyes. And so when I want to talk about examples and show examples, I'm not going to be opening up these pages. Um, I'm going to open up these because what I've done is I've taken real life lists and tasks and to do's and stuff I'm working on and I've translated it in a way that's not too personal so that it, so I can show you and it will make sense, but without, um, invading in my own little privacy. Um, thanks for telling me that it makes sense because sometimes I wonder. Okay. So, um, this is a place where I keep all of my running lists. So for example, I always have a running list for my husband. Anyone else do that? David is literally the opposite of me when it comes to documenting. I think I've ruined him. He married a documenter, and I think that I think that because of that, he's like, well, I don't have to do it. And he really has taken that to heart. And I'm laughing because it's really kind of funny between us. Like he hardly takes pictures. He never journals. He doesn't record anything. And to boot, the man doesn't even know how to make a list. Like of course he knows how to make it. Everyone knows how to make a list, but he literally, I've never ever in my entire 22 years of marriage with him seen him put two or more lines above one another. He doesn't make lists. Now this blows my mind because I'm a total list maker and I can't survive without lists. Like that's just, again, how I function. But listen, somebody's got to keep this man on track with what needs to be done. So I would like to say it's a honey-do list, but it's not really a honey-do list. Like he needs to fix this, he needs to take care of that. It's more of like all the David related stuff. Like we need to remember to talk about this. Um, he's gonna check out the kids' helmets. Um, I'm like reading the examples I put on here. He's gonna follow up with the plumber for a project we have. Um, and it has on here, go through recipe books together and declutter. That's a real life example because we've been decluttering for the last couple of years big time and we chomp away when we can. And so this is my place to not forget what either he needs to do that he wants to, he kind of relies on me to help him remember. He wouldn't say that, but I'm gonna tell you that that's the truth. Um, but also the things that we need to remember together, like, oh yeah, we need to talk about that. Cause I don't know about you guys, but real life, when we're both so busy and we're going in lots of directions and lots of things are going on, sometimes at the end of the day, all we want to do is just like de-brain, I say de-brain, and watch a, an episode of This Is Us. <laughs> I'm so excited to watch it tonight because we watch like the day or two after it actually airs. Anyone else watch This Is Us? Okay, I'm off topic. Um, so some of you are saying, yeah, same with your husband. la di da di da Oh, you guys, I love your comments. I wish I could like talk and read your comments at the same time. I'm gonna do my best. Okay, so that's like an example of a list that I keep in this notebook. I also keep lists like um, random lists. 
random about anything. Like right now we're building a home. And so there's always like working with our builder, there's always certain things that need to be priority of what we need to be either talking about, browsing, selecting, things like that. I know, happy Hyde Star. Hey Heidi, I love This Is Us as well. Oh man, oh it's so good. Okay, <laughs> who wants to watch it live with us tonight? So fun. Okay, this is like the kicker right here. This is the main way that I use a notebook every single day. Like I'm in my notebook more than I check social media, more than I'm in my inbox, more than I, this is again how I function. And it looks a little something like this. There's a whole YouTube video that explains my system, but I can give you the short of it. And that is that I do use, sorry about the lighting, three pins, my regular pen, my Sharpie, and my highlighter, okay? So um, the, f the way this functions is that I have, I wish this couldn't be backwards, sorry guys. Anyway, so there's home and family stuff and there's work stuff. I put a little checkbox because I think it looks pretty and I write the things down and then every day I look at that and I'm like, okay, what's the most important thing right now? What has to happen before all the other stuff? Well, you highlight it, right? This is kind of like simple, basic stuff. So when I've completed it, I really want to see that I've done it. It's like super important to me to just put that big, thick black marker right through there. It's better than just a little skinny pin. That's why I use three pins. It's silly and quirky, but it's what I do. And I, from what I understand, a lot of you are doing that as well now, which is really fun. So when I finish it, I cross it off. I actually do check marks now too, but I didn't on this one. And then, and then when it gets messy and full, I just... I just start the next page and carry a few things over and that's it. That's how I keep lists. And that's how I keep my priorities straight so I'm not losing track of what is super important to do. Um, okay, so that is kind of the main way I use that notebook. Let's move on to another one. Let me make sure. Hi in Brazil. Oh, someone's asking, do I rest sometime? Oh, I rest. Oh, oh yes, I rest. I, I occasionally take a nap especially if it's on a Sunday, but even during the week, like I'll lay down for 30 minutes. If, if my body is telling me you are freaking tired and you need to stop, I will stop. I am really trying to be better about listening to my body and I hope that you are as well. I hope we all are doing that. Oh, lots of hearts on that one. Okay, um, so much satisfaction with the Sharpie. Uh-huh, I know, I know, I know. All right, so let's talk about another one. Now, I haven't talked about this one yet, not because it's a secret, but I was experimenting with something. Speaking of taking care of your body, how funny. What a natural segue. So I'm trying to make some changes in my life, pretty typical of a lot of us in January. Um, nothing crazy hardcore. I just am like, you know what? I need to be a little less fluffy in my life. I need to um, take better care of myself. And so... Um, I am, I'm just trying to make sure I do something active every day ish. Um, that's like on purpose active, not just my usual activity. And I also am trying to be a little better about what I'm eating. Now, I'm not on a diet. I'm not doing any, I, that's not actually my, I don't, anyway, that's another topic for another day, but I'm just trying to make better choices. And so it occurred to me as a documenter, bing, like light bulb moment that we all have once in a while. If you document what you're eating every day throughout the day and your water intake and just how you're feeling, it's that documentation that helps you become more aware of what you're doing. I know you know what I'm talking about. I'm not counting calories and macros. I'm not writing down measurements. I'm not, that's not my place right now and that's not my choice. But what is my choice is that I've decided to use this notebook as my wellness journal. I'm not sharing this on Instagram as far as like, here's my journey, follow me along. I love actually when people do that because I think it's really inspiring. That's not, I just, this is a private thing for me. I'm just trying to be more aware of my eating habits and whatever. Anyway, so I weigh myself in the morning, I write down my weight, I write down my water and my food and just how I'm feeling. And here's what's cool, I've been doing this for a few weeks and it is magically helping me be way more aware than I ever was of what's what I'm doing, my choices, because I'm writing it down. And in turn, because I know I'm gonna write it down, I'm a whole heck of a lot more aware during the day that if I really reach in that bag and have four more famous Amos cookies, I'm gonna have to write it down. And that doesn't look pretty. <laughs> Maybe that just happened yesterday. 
So, hashtag true story. So that is what I'm using this for and I really, really like it. And because I've been like making better choices, I'm already down a few pounds from the last week or two and that kind of feels amazing. Now, that is not a magic trick and that is just my personal experience, but I'm just letting you know that my little wellness journal is helping me because I'm recording stuff. There's really something to that. There's a power in recording. I know you guys know this. All right, now, okay. Oh, you guys are cute. Oh, okay, so you keep a food diary also in a notebook. Yep, this is not a new concept. Very cool, sorry, I'm just looking at your comments. Oh man, I just wanna to respond to every single one of them. Okay, so let's move on to the next notebook that I use. I've been going for over 20 minutes already and I meant to keep this to like a half an hour. Okay, my kids' journals. I have for many years kept these little journals that I call um, We Noticed. So I call them We Noticed because they're not just journals. They're not just like, here's everything. Hold on one second. Someone's requesting to be in my live video. No, that's not gonna happen, but I bet you're super nice. I'm just unfamiliar with, that's something I should do sometime, but it's gotta be set up ahead of time because I gotta know who you are. Um, Hmm. Okay. So kids journals, kids journals. All right. So I'm going to show you a few journals that are very, very precious to me. They're not, um, from our store. The ones I've shown you so far can all be found at shop Um, just as a side note. Um, but these I got at target. I've been getting notebooks at target for ages, but I haven't switched them out yet because they're not full yet and I'm a very practical person. So as soon as these get full and I move into the next notebook because these are like the second for each of my kids, then I will of course switch to the ones that are near and dear to my heart. They're the ones that we make because we make notebooks um, under our Home by Becky Higgins brand. So back to the topic of these, it's called We Notice because this is not a journal of here's everything that I feel about you and here's everything that you've done this week and here's all of the stuff and you're like I that would that would send me into never mind can't do it can't keep up I know my limitations I know where I cap out and uh, and realize that I'm not able to do anymore and so this is my happy medium and the whole purpose of this is to write just one thing on a regular basis. I would love to say every day, and it did start every day, and I was pretty good about it, and then it was a little less, and then I'd get better, and then I'd get worse, and right now, I'm pretty good to do it once or twice a week. I wish I would do it every day, but I'm learning that if I keep these physically out, like by my bedside or on my desk, then I will be more likely to write in them more often, because it only takes five minutes. It only takes five minutes. So what it is, is um, whenever I write in the journal, I write something that we noticed about them that day. So again, it's not about life events and you've done this and just something we've noticed. So it could be something quirky about their personality. It could be the way that we noticed their interaction with a friend. It could be that we noticed how they handled a certain situation. It could be something I noticed 99% of the time. It's just me in the journal, but I call it we noticed because their father and I both notice them. And, um, and sometimes at the end of the day, I'll say, okay, babe, what, what did you notice? What's something? And, and once in a blue moon, he'll write it down. Again, he's not a natural journal, journaler. And I don't wanna you know, force him into something that I care deeply about, but maybe not, isn't his, he loves that I do it, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. So let me just read you a couple examples. Um, so these, again, this is like my, my, my sample notebook, not their actual notebooks right now because I don't want to accidentally read something too personal. Um, but let's see, this one says license plates, this is in quotes, license plates should have emojis on them. If I had a license plate, it would be a lowercase p, poop emoji, poop emoji, capital P. And then I said, oh, wow, crew, wow, you're creative, buddy, that's for sure. So that's it. It was just something funny that he said that had us laughing. Oftentimes, when my kids do or say something really funny, immediately in the moment, these are not secret journals. They know about them. They love them. Uh, but in that moment, I'll be like, that's what I'm writing in your journal today. They know. They know what I'm doing. And here's what's so cool. I'm kind of telling you what's like cool about recording. Posterity, yes. All day long, posterity will love these notebooks. Their children and their children's children are gonna love these fun anecdotes and these really special moments from their lives. But also, in the moment, and my children knowing that I keep these journals for them, 
what do you think that does to a child's self-esteem? A lot of you watching your documenters, your scrapbookers, your journalers, your photojournalists, your whatever, you're documenting in some way. What do you think your documentation does for your children's self-esteem? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, it's remarkable. And psychologically, there are studies that have shown what a blessing this is for kids and how much more self-worth they feel and how much more sense of their identity, sense of connection with their family. It's powerful. And I'm gonna say it's more powerful than any of us can actually truly understand right now. I think that doing this stuff, and recording these stories and telling these things is there's a reason why we do it there's a reason there are so many reasons ah, i'm missing all of your comments um oh awesome rebecca says i also started a mom and me journal for me and my girls we pass it back and forth chat about anything ah oh, yes and i oh oh you guys love it love it love it oh great question white Seal mom says, always positive? No, 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 no. These journal entries are not always positive. I mean, okay, let me say that differently. Some of them are very based on life lessons. So honey, I noticed that today you struggled with dot, 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 and it was so great to talk with you about this and I can totally tell that you are figuring this out and I'm so proud of you. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's constructive. It's not, you're amazing all the time and you do all the coolest things and you make all the right decisions 100% of the time. No, because that's not real life and that's not human life. But I always do end it on a positive note because I love my children. I want them to learn, not just in real life, but in these records of their life. And so, yeah, I guess the short answer is yeah. It is always positive. Um, you guys, I so want to read all of your comments. Ah! I love it. Okay, what I was going to say, one more thing. For people who um, who do like a parent-child, like a mother-daughter journal, because that was brought up, which is super cool. I've actually thought about that. And Claire and I have talked about it, and we thought that would be really cool. But it hasn't like jived as well, just because there's always so much going on, and we both forget about it and whatever. And so this is this definitely suffices. But we also do something else that really makes sense that some of you already know about that I'm gonna to totally share with you. So let me segue into that. Oh yes, um, somebody's saying one notebook for each child or one shared notebook. For me, I do one for each child. That may not be everybody's thing. Hold on. Oh, hmm. DJ Douglas says, don't you think that actually writing lists is a trend that's replacing digital note-taking for a reason? That is really interesting to think about. I don't know. I am not a trend watcher. I know I should be. As a business owner, I probably should be more up on that, but I've never been interested in what's the trend. Is that weird? That is, there you go, there's your Becky quirk of the day. I've never been one to care a whole lot about what the current trend is. And so I literally just, I don't think about it. I always care about what's the solution? What's gonna work for me? What's gonna help people? What's going to encourage and inspire people to be better documenters? That is why Project Life was created. I didn't care about the trends. I didn't care about the stuff anymore and scrapbooking. And so I wanted a solution and then developed it and brought it to the world. And then I wanted a better solution that worked with not having to print pictures and get out supplies, Project Life app. And then I wanted another solution, you know? <laughs> so that's just kind of the premise of our business and how we work and anyway. Um, but that's definitely, that's really good insight because I, I agree with you and I think you're piggybacking on what I was saying earlier, which is I think that there are reasons that we need to be recording that we don't even understand. So we need to be doing it. And I think digital recording is awesome. Hello, all day long. I mean, I, I do all of our family memory keeping in, in my device. I was looking for it, it's right here. <laughs> in my device, in the Project Life app. The point is to print it out. So if you're doing anything digital that is important to you, whether it's journaling, scrapbooking, note taking, and you want that and you don't want that to be lost, you need to make sure that you are somehow outputting that and having a hard copy. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, ooh, that's so good. Somebody saying, or I wonder if siblings would do it to each other, the notebooks. From a mom's point of view, I would love it. 
Don't know if they would be on board. I would tell you my kids would think I have lost my mind if I suggested that they keep a journal together just because of the stage of life they're in and they just, you know, cats and dogs sometimes and I can't see them doing that, but ooh, what a good strategy. I'm writing that down. Okay, like for real. This is, that's actually really, really, really kind of interesting. I'm gonna experiment with that. I'm gonna see what it's like for my kids to actually share a journal and ask each other questions. So let's go ahead and go into the next notebook I was gonna share with you. Um, these are my Q&A journals with my children. This one is Porter's. These are all in our shop right now, I think. I think, I, actually this one might be sold out. This one is Cruise. The title doesn't lend itself as well to a Q&A journal with a child, we're both like really okay with that. We really like the style of it. He chose it. And then this one is Claire's. Write that down. And I have, these are beaten up and abused in the most beautiful way. It makes me happy. So what the Q&A journal is, hold on. Let me look at your, make sure I'm not missing something. What about a shared family journal where everyone can write their thoughts? You are awesome. Yes. Like I would love to see that. Man, why am I not doing that? Probably because I have like 50 other notebooks going. <gasps> you really inspired me. I, I really want to try that. Okay, so here's what this is. Dang, I really want to share something with you from their notebook. I've just got to make sure that it's not too personal. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so the Q&A journal is, it, it started like this. Several months ago, Crew, who historically, he's nine years old, historically he is our most inquisitive child. He literally asks so many questions a day and I love it, we love it. And sometimes we're like, <laughs> Crew, like take a breath, like stop with all your questions. But 99% of the time we are genuinely like, this kid is, asking questions is a very good thing and we love that he asks questions and he asks thoughtful questions. And he asks questions that make me think, this kid is gonna do something amazing. And anyway, so that's kind of the backstory. Well, at night, I tuck my kids in, every single one of them, even my teenagers, every night I lay with them, scratch backs, we talk, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's my thing and I love it. And Crew, um, for a while there, when I would tuck him in, his questions became about me. Now, that the reason why that's like, what, Kids are self-centered, naturally. Actually, I think we all are. But children, are, they the world revolves around them, right? Well, Crew was demonstrating that he's thinking outside of himself. So I was like, what is this? How did you and dad meet? What did you do when you were a kid? What were your favorite games? I'm like, oh my gosh, this kid is cut from my cloth. Like, what is this? Like, you can tell. I was like, wanting to burst of excitement that he had this mind thinking about biographical information about me, his mom, like, anyway. So, um, so because he was asking all these questions, I was like, you are such a cool kid. Thank you for asking. I'm happy to share, blah, blah, blah. And then it kind of, I had another light bulb moment at prompting to start a and a journal with him. And this is where I would ask him questions because he loves that dialogue and that's his love language is that one-on-one -on -one attention. I picked up a notebook, chose this one, I, we chose it together, and I wrote a little note in the beginning, and, and then I started. I started. And I just said, in my writing, I said, what is one memory you have from being a really young child? Super generic. And I put the date, 10 29 17. And then he wrote, one thing I remember is the bouncy house on my five B-day party. Great, Q, A, simple. The more, we got into this, the more I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the greatest treasure in my life. <laughs> because not only did he answer the questions, his personality came out so, so much that I was like, okay. I mean, he's bursting with personality, but I'm like, I've got to do this with Porter and Claire too. Holy cow, you guys, I'm going so long. Okay, um, he, I wrote, what are your favorite bedtime traditions? And obviously I was kind of thinking, you know, and he says, back scratching, period. 
in parentheses, can you scratch now, please? Question mark. <laughs> um, and this actually, this was not at bedtime when we wrote it. It was in church. And so that kind of leads me into the next point is I decided I would start a journal for each of my kids and I would actually bring them to church with me because sometimes if they're having a hard time being reverent when we're all together, in our worship ser services, maybe it would be good for them to just do a little Q&A. Nothing to distract them too much, but something to keep them like reverent. And so um, anyway, yes, I want, I would love to read you like page after page, after page, after page of his answers. Um, it is seriously so, so, I'm looking for another one I can read, but I'm gonna not. Okay, anyway, this has been the best ever. So one for each child. These are definitely personal. These are, these are their records because they're answering them. And here's the best part. Here's the coolest blessing. There are so many blessings that come from doing this. But one is that my kids who are not natural documenters necessarily, and I don't force them into that world, except guess what? I kind of just sneaky, sneaky sneaked into their life. I snuck this into their life because they think it's just kind of a fun back and forth with mom. And obviously they now know my secret, but really what they're doing is keeping a journal. It's their handwriting, it's their answers, it's their life, they're telling it. I'm just prompting them. I'm prompting them. And so what questions do you ask if you wanna do something like this? You ask whatever pops into your mind. Now, ideally I would actually produce a notebook that I, it's completely prompt loaded and we would love, we're actually planning to do things like that, but that's specific for your children, but they're your children. And the questions I've written down for my kids for the most part are not super broad and generic. Uh, some of them are like, what's something fun and special from the last few days of your life, right? Anyone could answer that. But some of them are very specific. Hey, I noticed um, that you did something really kind for so-and-so the other day. How did that make you feel? You know, like, and so I think that it's important to be really specific if you're going to do a Q&A journal with your kiddos. All right, let me look at your comments really quick. Woo, holy smokes. Okay, hold on. Hang on. Oh, um, Carla says, do you ask just one question a day? This is not a daily thing. This is a whenever thing. Um, so it's at least weekly because like I said, I bring the notebooks with me to church. I just have them in my bag and sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't. If, if they're in their mood, great. If they're like, mm, then I don't. I actually would much prefer they listen to whoever's speaking in our congregation. That's what I want them to do. But if they want, if they're in the mood to just do a little exchange, then you kidding me? This is awesome, okay? Um, let's see. Um, hold on. Ooh, nervous Nancy. Oh, Nancy, hey. Oh, that's so good. She says, I'm trying to do this question answer documenting with my parents. I need some ideas on questions to ask them. Yes, oh my goodness, holy smokes. If you do this with your parents, that is the coolest thing ever. And do it via email. Most of us don't live near our parents, but if you live near your parents, Oh my gosh, have their handwriting, that's even better. As far as questions, there are so many resources online. You literally could just search, um, um, uh, gosh, what, what can you search? Um, questions, life questions, there's so much stuff out there. One source that I know of for sure, please chime in, because I know some of you are gonna know this better than me and now I'm gonna forget, but search 52 stories. Is that what it's called? Rana? Rana, are you here? <laughs> um, 52 stories. I think it's put out by Family Search, familysearch.org. So if you go to familysearch.org, I think 52 stories will probably be right there. I'm not going to distract myself and get my computer out, but somebody else can. Um, or just do a Google search for 50, 52 stories. Anyway, they've come up with a prompt of basically a question, a prompt one per week for a year that you could answer about your life or you could share with somebody to have them answer about their life. Yes, that is, Nancy, I would just point you to that. That would be a great place to go. Um, let's see. Oh, Lisa says, is there a designated time for them to answer or do you just leave it out for them to answer whenever? I've done both, but for the most part, it really is us sitting together and me going, okay, are you up for a question? Yep, great. And then I write a question and I hand it to them and then that's it. Um, I did try the other day. I wrote a question for Porter and I'm like, okay, okay, it's here, like whenever you want. And he so totally did not make it a priority that day. He was way busy with watching Good Mythical Morning or <laughs> playing Madden or texting with his friends. And so that's not effective for me and it doesn't work, but it might work for some of you and your families. Um, <clears throat> holy smokes, I'm talking so much. Okay. 
Would you throw these notebooks away? Oh, okay. So let's let's talk about throwing away because um, I. Okay, um, notebooks throwing away. No, for the most part, no. These are journals. No, um, this one, my wellness journal. I'll probably toss it when I feel like I'm done. Like the point is not to have a lasting record of my weight every day. The point is not because I think anyone on the entire planet now or in 50 years will ever care about the daily things that went into my mouth. The point of this journal is to make myself more aware of what I'm eating and how I'm eating. Holy cow, just a second, I'm so, I'm so talking too much. <clears throat> okay, so this, when I'm ready, will probably go Bye bye. Right, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna to toss it. I'm gonna to throw it away. But so many people think that I am just destroying our planet. I always recycle. <laughs> so anyway, that I'm gonna to toss this. See how almost empty it is. This I toss. Now you might think, but that's a record of your to dos. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm a record keeper. I I'm a documenter. But I can't. I can't. I don't want to save everything. I save so much. Have you seen my scrapbooks? Okay, I save a ton and I do a ton of documenting and memory keeping and so for me to try to save every single notebook I do, no, not, nope. So this will go in the trash bin still. I'm done with that. So I throw that away, that away. Kids journals, no, of course not. I do not throw those away. Kids journals are for record keeping, for posterity, for longevity. The Q&A journals, same thing. For sure those are keepers. That's why I'm doing them. Um, and then there's one more notebook I wanna talk about. One more notebook. One more notebook and I want you guys to talk about all the notebooks that you want to um, talk about. Uh, let's see, hold on. Hashtag 52 stories. Yep, look it up. I really, it, does somebody know? Isn't it from Family Search? I really feel like it is. I, I should know that. I love that. Yep, restock notebooks. Oh, notebooks, restocking. Um, if you are interested in getting notebooks from us, shop beckyhiggins.com. Um, that's pretty much where they're exclusively sold. They are available for retailers to carry if they want to pick them up. And we're not getting a lot of traction. I'm being totally honest with you. Um, there's not a whole lot of retailers that are picking those up. It's a brand new, it's a new brand, Home by Becky Higgins, that's not associated with Project Life, even though it's under our company. And so it hasn't gained that traction yet. So really the only place that you can find it is shopbeckyhiggins.com, unless your local mom and pop shop happened to pick them up. Oh, good. Confirmation on Family Search. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, but man, you know when you just feel so strongly about something? I don't care if no retailers ever pick these up. These notebooks are supposed to exist. Are they extra special and different and unique from notebooks you could pick up in other places? Not particularly. They're called the simple notebook because they are a simple notebook. They are just plain, simple lines. It says at the bottom of each page, cultivate a good life and record it. But they're ours, and that's what makes them special. They come from a, a place of love, um, a place of love for documenting, a place of love for list making, a place of love for organization, a place of love for you. Um, so yeah, that's just what they are. By the way, this one that I'm holding was the first love notebook that we launched, and um, they we printed a thousand of these and they sold out in less than a day. And um, we donated, for every notebook sold, we donated a portion of the sales to charity. And that was really special for us. This um, is actually made, the design is my brother's, my late brother's handwriting. His name is Jonathan and he passed away about five years ago. But he was an architect and an engineer and had the most amazing handwriting and we made it into a font um, long before he got um, cancer. And so we used that font to create the notebook and we are so grateful that so many of you showed your support and snatched it right up. And you loved it so much that we, we, we couldn't stop with the whole love notebook idea. So we produced another one in a different colorway with a different foil color, same exact design, different color, printed 2,000 of those and they sold out again. So, what do you think maybe might be a good idea? Maybe we should produce another one? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Let me share with you one more notebook that I do. And 
this is important. This is really, really important. So this is called, these, these notebooks, I've got a couple of them now and it's almost filled up the second one. This is called, for me personally, Notes of the Spirit. This is my last one, my first one that I filled up, completely full. This is my current one. Magic is something you make, I believe that. All right, so that's my current one. And when that fills up, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use yet, but I'm definitely going to use one of these. These are not the ones I wanna throw away. These are very, very special to me. And they're blank and ready and sold out. I can't get them again, so I've been reserving those for my, um, for my notes of the spirit. So what they are, are notes that I take that have anything to do with cultivating a good life. So it's not so much the to-dos of life, it's more of how to be, not what to do, but how to be. And those notes come from so many places. They come from sitting in church and listening to people's talks and listening to people's lessons. They come from reading the scriptures. They come from listening to podcasts. They come from watching a TED talk. They come from, I had a conversation with someone at work the other day and I really felt something strongly that I wanted to do a little better or a little different in my life and so I write it down. So one might say, well, it's just kind of like your journal. Yeah, I guess you could say that. This is my way of keeping a journal that's different than our family yearbook and different than scrapbooking and different than anything associated with pictures. This is my journal, but it's specifically notes of the spirit because I really feel like that those promptings that I, that I feel throughout the day on a regular basis are things that I should be writing down. Now here's, here's what I'm gonna say about that. I really, really believe with all of my heart and through years and years and years of experience of being a documenter, that when we take the time to write down things of the spirit or things that help us understand more of how we wanna cultivate a good life, whether we felt inspired from a talk we heard or a sermon at church or conversation with a friend or a TED talk or whatever, when we take the time to record those impressions that we're feeling, what do you think happens? A, you're more likely to remember, even if you never look back. Even if you don't ever look back at the notebook, the fact that you took the pen to the paper and wrote it down means that you have impressed upon your heart and your mind that thing, even if you never see it again. That is amazing. It doesn't always work, it's not foolproof, but there's something to it. Second thing, when you are writing down those things that you're feeling and those impressions that you're having and the promptings that you're receiving, do you think that it's more likely to help you cultivate that life that you really want? Yes, <laughs> a resounding, all caps, lots of exclamation points, yes. And that's what my huge, huge, huge takeaway that I want you to feel is that when we take the time to document and write things down, that's a, that, that is the biggest blessing that I've been receiving in my life from these notebooks, all of this, this is not just pen and paper. This is actually helping me to understand and have clarity on how exactly I want to cultivate a good life, the best life for me. So let me give you a couple of examples. This is going to help you make sense of like what I mean when I say notes of the spirit. So I'm sitting in church or I'm watching a TED talk or I'm listening to a podcast and I feel impressed to write certain things down. So I write them down. Now here's the thing. This is not like notes on they said this and they said that. It's not note taking on people's talks. And I'm gonna go back and look at your comments in a minute. Sorry, I'm like kind of, I just gotta stay on a roll for a second. Um, here's a sample page of what note taking looks like for me. So this happens to be um, church, right? So I write church, I always title at the top what it is, like it's a podcast, it's a talk, it's church, it's conversation with a friend and the date and always date your pages because you might think that, oh yeah, of course I'll remember when that happened and no you won't, no you won't, okay? Just date it, date everything that you do. You'll thank me later. My mama taught me that, I'm passing it on to you. So I take the notes, I write the things down and then look at my key. Mm, are you gonna focus? Eh, no, it's not, okay. A, R, S, R, A, what are these letters? This is my personal little key and I'm sharing it with you as a tool that might help you. When I write things down, I also take note of what I'm supposed to do with that. The point of recording stuff isn't just for nothing. It isn't just for posterity. It isn't just for dot, dot, dot. It's for now, it's for right now. And so when you feel impressions and you feel like those promptings come or those ideas come, or maybe you have 
something related to work that just pops into your mind, write it down, write it down. And then once you've written it down, for me personally, when I put a little key here and I actually say what I wanna do with it, it helps me put the promptings into action. Because I'm not gonna forget. So I'm holding myself accountable. So it's freaking magic. <laughs> Excuse my language. Okay, so A is for action. This means I gotta do this right now or as soon as I can or, or whatever. So this is a great example. I'm sitting in church and the bishop, which is like the ecclesiastical leader of our congregation says and announces, oh, so you know, the workmen's had their baby, blah, 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 blah. So I felt this impression. I love the workmen's. And, and I felt this impression, oh, I definitely wanna reach out to them and send them a little something or take cookies or whatever. Okay, we, you and I have these fleeting thoughts every single day going in and out of our brains. Every single day, these promptings, these feelings, these impressions, but they go in and out, don't they? Quickly, because we're busy and our mind is full of so many things. I'm such a believer that when you record things and you get it out of your head and onto paper, you don't have to remember it here. You don't have to store it here where it's so cluttered and there's so much stuff to remember but you won't forget because you put it here. And so then you see the written reminder. And so for me, I put the A because it's action. And I wrote specifically, workmen's had their baby Briggs. A little heart. Reach out and take a treat to their family. And guess what I did? I did that. I did that. I didn't forget and feel guilty. Um, R is for read. Sometimes I'll hear about a great book or a great talk or whatever, and I don't want to forget it. So I write it down and I put a little R and that reminds me I want to read that. S means share. That's actually kind of really related to you guys very directly. Um, I'll write something down that makes me feel impressed that I should share that, not just on social media, but with my family or with a friend or with someone. It could be just me and a friend that I'm going to text and say, hey, I wanted you to know this. In this example, it says, and this is just literally, it's an impression I felt during someone speaking at church. It says, during those times that we are feeling buried, we are really being planted. It was a quote from something, I'm sure I butchered it. It wasn't exactly right. I don't even know who said it, but it really impressed, impressed upon my heart. Something that was so significant that I felt like, you know what, probably somebody needs to hear that. So I put a little S with a box. I didn't have the plan of what I was doing in that moment, but later in that day, probably I laid down in my bed to take a nap, because I love those naps on Sundays. I probably did a social share. I know I did a social share about that. Some of you might remember the social share. That's what the S means, it means share. I am being a little long-winded right now and I have gone for nearly an hour. I better be done in seven minutes or I have passed an hour and this is too long. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop there. A is for action, R is for read, S is for share, and W is for watch. <clears throat> I have taken notes on um, TV shows or movies that people have said, you've got to see this. Uh, YouTube videos, you name it. So notes of the spirit, it isn't all like fully, deeply spiritual stuff only. It is, it is cultivating a good life. And it applies to you because we are all trying to cultivate a good life and hopefully the best life for us. And so whatever that means for you, whatever those notes look like and wherever you derive them from, maybe has nothing to do with watching, listening, reading, any of that. Maybe it's all just whatever's in your mind and heart and that's what you're taking notes on. Those are my notebooks. <laughs> I did not mean to go this long. I, I really, in my mind, I'm like, this can't even go past 30 minutes. There's no way. Now, give me a second. I'm gonna scroll back. <clears throat> um, gosh, you guys are so kind. I, I wanna respond to every single one of you. Okay, Brittany, you're saying please save this video as a highlight video so we can access later. That's my plan. I just, I haven't saved a live, an Instagram live before. Um, so I, please give me your tips if you guys have them, but cross your fingers and toes with me and let's hope that it's done properly. Um, do you carry this notebook and your list notebook with you everywhere you go? Yes, I do. I do. I totally do. So right now, why do I say that with so, so much enthusiasm? Because I love it so much. I love it so much. What did I say at the beginning of this broadcast? So many of you, um, some of you were here, some of you were not. So I'm going to say it one more time. I asked a question at the top of this broadcast. What's one thing in your life that if you don't do it, you're, you feel like you're just like off your rocker and you're not, 
things aren't quite right. But if you do it, if you do that thing, you feel more whole and more complete. There's a lot of things, my list is long, but guys, I have rediscovered this in the last few years of my life and it completes me and I do feel more clarity. I do. It's real. I'm not just, this is not like promoting notebooks as a physical object. This is like the philosophy and psychology behind doing this is real. It's okay. Becky, simmer down. So yes, they go everywhere I go. <laughs> Um, my husband, Brittany says, my husband and I keep I noticed or what I love about you journals totally boosts me up. It makes me want to do and be better every time I read his sweet words to me. Everyone do this with your husband. That's, thank you for sharing that. That is so cool. Man, I'd have to seriously like twist David's arm because <laughs> that would mean writing things on a regular basis. <laughs> I love that. I really do. I really hope a lot of you take inspiration from what Brittany says and do that about each other. <clears throat> I recently heard, a sh they're not the only ones, but I heard Tara Thuison on Instagram, who's like my cyber friend. We haven't met in real life, but I love her. And I think she likes me and she loves the Project Life app. Hi, Tara. Um, but she recently shared that her husband gave her a gift that was a notebook full of things that he'd been writing like every day for several months of what he loved about her. And I'm like, drop the mic. That is awesome. He is awesome. Keep him. That's so great. Okay. Clark, um, Deanna says, yes, out of brain down to paper. Yes. Out of brain down to paper. If you, if you write things down seriously, like then they're out of your brain, which uh, here's one thing I didn't say about that really quick. Again, I really believe this. I'm so I am certain that there are psychologically based research papers. It's out there. I just don't, I haven't looked for it, but I just know it exists. When you put things out of your mind and you put them on the paper, not only do you declutter and you won't forget because it's on paper, but guess what else happens? That frees up your mind for, and, and creates space for the other things that you really need to be thinking about. It allows for more creativity. It allows for more productivity. Man, I believe that, like, faux show. Okay, um, did I really do that live? For sure, for sure. Okay, will you ever do a simple notebook with graph paper? That's also on our list of the type of notebook that we would like to do. What is your opinion on electronic journals? I'm such a slow writer. Brittany, I think that any journaling is great, but like I was saying earlier, just make sure that you output it. Make sure you print it. Make sure that you're saving it, backing up multiple places, like I, you and I both, if we haven't experienced it ourselves, we know somebody who has, have lost things because technology fails. Technology cannot be depended upon for everything. It's a blessing. Look, look at us. Look at us. Technology is making this possible. But technology can fail us and it cannot be consistently depended upon for preserving our memories, that's for sure. So case in point, when we were first married and we had our Gateway 2000 computer, our first computer as a married couple in 1995, I kept my journal on that computer faithfully. I kept a journal, I was a journaler, I did it. See where the story's going? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now that computer crashed. The journal was completely lost, like pages and pages, months and months. I'm trying to think of when it happened. A couple years worth of um, journals gone. Oh, you guys, I just got a warning. I, it says I have a, a minute and 49 seconds left. I didn't even know that was possible. I am that long-winded. Oh, my stars. Which means that we are going to end. Dang it. And I, seriously, all of your, all of your, um, Comments are amazing. I hope you guys have been reading it. One more that I'll read out loud. Um, please make sure the coils will hold a pin. The last ones I ordered wouldn't. These, I always put a pin in my notebooks. They do. You must be using a super thick pin, so just kind of maybe consider the pin that you're using, because if the coils are too thick, then we're less likely to stick them in our bag. You know what I'm saying? We want to keep these um, with us. All right, I can't read any more comments. I can't talk anymore. I have to end there because I have gone too long. I've gone too long, which I, dang. Okay, so I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of this discussion. I super love notebooks and I believe in the power of recording. That's kind of the main point of all of this. And you guys are awesome. Bye.